At the end of the show, I, I like to go out with these, I like to call them feel-good stories. And today's feel-good story is, is something that I really enjoyed finding this because, and the reason I use this one is we all associate by name or by picture or by whatever we tend to profile people with um, certain behaviors. And this week's story is about a gentleman named Muhammad. And this is one amazing human being. There's many kids, nobody wanna take them because especially the one who gonna die, nobody wants to deal with death, you know? So these kids, if you, we don't take them, they're gonna stay in the hospital or in facility. There is no bond. There is nobody holding them, nobody talk to them. I always talk with my kids. Doesn't matter if blind or deaf, I always talk to them because I believe they are a human being, they have soul, they have feeling. And for, for the, the girl I have now, I mean the only communication by touching her and holding her, the only knows that somebody with her. In December 20, I was diagnosed with colon cancer and I have to go to the hospital to operate on me one day before my birthday. I was so scared. I am 62 years old. I was so petrified because I have nobody to go with me. I have to face the doctors. I have to go to the operation by myself and I say, where is your family? I have I have no family. Where is your wife? My wife passed away. Where is your son? Is my son handicapped? I was so scared. I felt what the kids felt. They are alone by themselves. This makes me do more for these kids because I was in their shoes. I mean, you imagine a little kid born with terminal illness and he's taken away from his mom and dad for maybe drug abuse or neglect. They traumatize. They scare it. I mean, it take you from everybody that you know to put you somewhere else. Top of that, you are sick and you have terminal illness. I believe each kid has rights to have a family, mom and dad, brother and sisters. And those kids in the system, they have nobody. It seems to be that the world has forgotten about them. Nobody speaks for them. So those kids need to somebody to take them to their house to make them have a family. I have brothers and sisters, as somebody who take care of them, loves them, and tell them, I am here for you. I am, we'll go through this together and give them security. Because really those kids, foster kids, anytime knock at the door, they think they're gonna, they're gonna, somebody is gonna take them away. They are not secure and they need security. and need permanent home for them they can call home. We are a human being. We should help each other. Doesn't matter what kind of help, financially, spiritually, medically, any help you can help, you should help because we are a human being and we're supposed to help each other. Doesn't matter what color, what religion, what country, no. We see as a human being. Like this, we live in harmony and we be united, not divided. I will foster kids as long as I am healthy and provide good care for them. I mean, I consider them as my biological kids. I never, never think about them as a foster kids. And uh, it really gives me great joy when I see them laughing and see a smile in their face. You're welcome. How great a story is that? And that one I, I, I'm proud to share because, you know, let's be realistic. For all the materialistic, crazy things that, that go on in this world, we could all be a little bit more like Muhammad to help the people around us, especially the least powerful among us, um, at their greatest times of need instead of turning our back or just sending a check blindly. Muhammad does it the right way. If you have any uh, comments, we're going to be available on social media, Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud, YouTube, coming to iTunes soon. And if you have any other comments about the production, about the content, or suggestions you want to add to some of our various segments, 
send an email to producer at unsafespacesusa.com. That's producer at unsafespacesusa.com.